thank you very much, Liam, and um, thank you very much, Dermot, uh, for, for having me here today at the uh, IIEA. It's, it's a real pleasure to be in Ireland again. Uh, during my time at uh, the IEA uh, based in Paris, I've had a chance to be over here a number of times. And uh, I, I won't say too much uh, except uh, about Ireland itself. I want to keep it global, as, as Liam mentioned. But the one thing I, I think I can say uh, without reserve is that Ireland is really doing some interesting and I think world-leading work in smart grids. And uh, I've had a chance to, um, uh, AirGrid actually uh, supported the, the IEA roadmap. Uh, I've had a chance to attend a workshop at ESB um, as they uh, talk about their vision moving forward. And, um, you know, the one message uh, I, I do want to leave here is that I think the world needs to hear more about uh, what Ireland is doing in smart grid because I think you have real problems and you're finding real solutions that other people have not reached yet. Uh, so this is going to be very exciting. But now just to go back um, and talk a little bit about the, the work that we've done at the IEA and I'll touch upon some of those other points again uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout my presentation. When we look at uh, the, the energy system, we look at it from a global perspective. Um, having members um, from around the world, we have 20, 28 members of the IEA um, from uh, Asia, North America, and Europe, of course. And we believe that an energy revolution is needed, but not only for climate goals, but also for energy security. We're seeing an increased focus on the energy security issues uh, today. And we see also that a range of technologies are needed. But one of the interesting things is you don't see smart grids in that list, but many of those uh, technologies listed there are directly impacted by, uh, by smart grid deployment. And, and as we were talking about over lunch, um, even CCS, a technology that I didn't really see the, the link between smart grids um, and itself, we're now actually starting to identify some, some links in that. So, we are going to see uh, need uh, a range of technologies. And within that, we see the electricity system. And one of the key questions that I got at the beginning of my work in smart grids was the question of what is smart grids? Well, what I've seen is that that question has now evolved to smart grids is X. And uh, they will say smart grids is deployment of renewables, smart grids is smart meters, smart grids is, um, you know, customer systems. And I think what's important to, to, um, to understand is that smart grids is deployed throughout the electricity system and that it is not a one-time event. It is a development um, and it is moving forward. Um, it, it doesn't happen just one step and you're completely done. And I know that I'm, I'm speaking to people who know that in this room, but another aspect of this is making sure that we can communicate this properly to the policymakers uh, who have to make uh, the decisions to deploy uh, smart grids in our system. So again, reaching, uh, touching again on the fact that smart grids uh, technologies are deployed throughout the electricity system. Um, you know, simple, simple diagram to just show that they, they deal with uh, the transmission system, the distribution system in the customer side uh, and all sectors in the, in the customer side and uh, a range of technologies. And this is a challenge, I think, for those who, who want to see this deployment in that it's not just a, a simple, you know, uh, provide a support program for, um, for solar energy, uh, you know, deploy solar panels. Uh, that's needed, that's, that's maybe appropriate in your given situation, but it's much more complex, and in some cases, um, uh, as, as I'm sure a number of us have heard, there are problems uh, where you get customer pushback. So a big part of what we want to do is really look at describing smart grids in a way that uh, people can understand, both customers and policy makers, and then also very uh, clearly articulating why do we need them. And that's where we start to, to touch on this. When we see smart grids being deployed throughout the electricity system, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? So we see demand side problems. We have variable demand, uh, management of electricity use, um, and increasing electricity costs. 
And we see that smart grid solutions can include demand response, uh, the acceleration of, of uh, energy efficiency, um, and uh, building or home automation. So that's just one part of it. Another consideration is distribution problems. We have, in many systems around the world, we have aging infrastructure. Uh, we have increased demand through new demands um, or just uh, more uh, electricity consumption in homes. Uh, peak demand, lack of outage information, and electricity theft. So again, we have the information and communications overlay with smart metering and sensing equipment, um, the ability to provide real-time or near real-time outage information, um, and detailed monitoring and management of demand and other technologies. So there in the distribution systems, we see that. Electric vehicles, very exciting technology. Uh, I'm excited to hopefully uh, uh, have an electric vehicle someday or at least drive one. Um, but how are they charged? Well, they're charged through the electricity system. And I think in the early discussions of electric vehicles, these were not addressed uh, or, or considered to the depth that's needed because they potentially could increase peak demand uh, issues that already exist in a system. So therefore, we can see uh, intelligent charging of electric vehicles and the potential to add grid stability through vehicle-to-grid operation. So we see this also in the transmission system, the opportunity to um, address problems um, there through um, high voltage DC, superconductors, flexible operation. And some of those aren't directly smart grid technologies, but they will too need that uh, intelligence, that uh, computer op um, and uh, IT uh, support to operate them effectively. And then just lastly, um, Talking about the generation side, we do see, uh, obviously, as um, Dermot mentioned, the increase of uh, deployment of variable renewables. Um, but then we still have inflexible large scale, um, whether it's coal or nuclear generation. These things have to work together as a system. And again, uh, smart grids can play uh, a significant role in that. So I've tried to just highlight the individual uh, parts of the system where, and, and just provide some examples to try to, uh, to, I guess, make it a bit more real of what smart grids are. But overall, um, the way we describe it is overall monitoring and management of electricity flow from generation to end um, using through, or sorry, electricity flow from generation to end use through two-way flow, two flow of both information and power. That is what smart grids are. So um, Liam wanted me to provide a bit of a, um, a global um, perspective on some of the, the, the large drivers for smart grids. And this graph wanted to, to point out a few key, key aspects. One is that we see the OECD member countries on the uh, left side of the figure, we see actually quite modest growth. But then when we go into the uh, developing countries and emerging economies, we see significant growth. And it ranges uh, in the pink bars there from uh, over 100% to over 500%. They're going to see significant um, deployments uh, in, in their countries. So they have the opportunity to leapfrog using smart grid technologies. And uh, in the OECD member countries, we see a lot of issues with aging infrastructure. So, both are drivers for smart grids, but from a different perspective. And here what we see when we actually put numbers to that, um, some significant markets and opportunities. And again, as we look at uh, China today is about the, I guess, the third largest electricity market. And it's going to go to the largest market in the world. We see India having, uh, will be a bigger market for electricity demand than Europe is today by 2050. So these are some big changes, and we need to um, address that, doing things better um, from an efficiency point of view and an operation point of view. Very tied to development, but also um, competition and energy security. Electric vehicle um, and plug-in hybrid electrical vehicle deployment. We see significant uh, deployments coming in the next 40 years. And what's interesting about EVs is that uh, I hear arguments that, well, you know, we don't really need to worry about that from the perspective of, you know, the, the 2020 or, or 2030 timeframe because 
that's at the point where they start to, to really get big. But what this doesn't show is the uh, deployment of, of electric vehicles in cities. We'll, we expect, this is again, global and, and uh, numbers averaged across regions, but cities will see these deployments very uh, much earlier or the, the bigger scale of deployments, so they will have to be addressed. Um, from a sectoral demand, I see that this graph looks like it didn't come out with its, its legend uh, on the screen here, but um, this is again just to, to illustrate one of the key points is very interesting. This green spot here um, under, under one scenario shows electric vehicles again. This is 10% of demand where today uh, it's zero. So that's, that's a very big change. Um, and we continue to see um, growth in, in all sectors um, for demand of electricity. So all these, uh, these issues need to be addressed. And lastly, peak demand. Um, uh, I think is an issue that's seen on, on many systems, whether it's summer peaks or, or winter <coughs> peaks. How can this be addressed? And, and we've just completed a study um, that shows the, the uh, role of smart grids. So I've talked about the, the demand side of, of the equation here as, as one of the drivers. And here, showing some data that, that we've developed um, at the IA, looking to the future on the generation side. And when we look at, again, on a global basis, what's important is if we keep with the business as usual with the baseline, uh, we see that uh, on a, um, averaged over the globe, only about 5% of variable renewables deployed. So, you know, I think it's, it's generally accepted that that is, can be addressed by the current way that we do things. But when we go to the, the blue map scenario where we, we actually achieve the um, uh, two degree temperature rise or the, the 450 parts per million um, CO2 emissions in the atmosphere, it's at the 20% level. So that's actually getting to be significant. But even if we go one step further and look at it regionally, we see that this, um, the, the penetration levels are very high in many places and at a minimum we're seeing significant change. And yet I know again that this here doesn't re uh, reflect the situation of Ireland at all, um, where Ireland will see actually much higher uh, deployments of variable generation. So again, these, uh, this global analysis is, is provides value, but we always need to drill down to the, the individual systems to really get a clear picture of the issues. So what about climate? And this is a, this is a tricky thing uh, for smart grids because in some respects, smart grids are an enabling technology. They don't produce or consume energy per se. So, but we've, uh, using some work that's done, uh, that was developed out of um, EPRI in the, in the US, we're able to uh, make an estimate. And again, this is a first cut, but smart grids have a, a real potential to uh, reduce CO2 emissions, and we estimate two gigatons by 2050. And uh, that's, a, that's a, actually quite a significant amount. Um, and it does that through enabling other technologies, but also uh, through some direct um, uh, emission reductions by improving uh, um, energy efficiency in the system. So overall, um, what we see is that smart grids, although this I, I do have concerns that smart grids could be just a, a name, almost a, a marketing, uh, uh, I guess a marketing word to talk about the electricity system. We do see it as a piece of the puzzle of really tying together the, the societal, the regulatory, the financial, and the policy issues within the electricity system. But at a minimum, it has really brought the attention to the system uh, in, the, in the recent years on a global level. And uh, we're really excited about that because we think this analysis is needed and more work is needed in this area. So what are some of the key efforts that are needed? They, there are a range of areas, and, and so I've divided them up into uh, four or, yeah, four separate areas. There is work that's needed to be done in a, from a technology perspective. We still need to uh, quantify and directly show what the benefits uh, of smart grid are. And of course, the, the challenge with this technology, I think, um, that is, is not seen by many people who, who don't work in the area is that 
it needs to be integrated with both existing and new uh, infrastructures. And, and I think that really is one of the big challenges. There is a significant amount of work that is needed um, around policy and regulation. And uh, I think it's, it's fair to say virtually uh, all over the world we've seen significant move to liberalization. There are pockets where this isn't the case. But this has given us benefits and problems. It's, it's segmented the market, which um, makes it more difficult if uh, some smart grid uh, deployments in the distribution system benefit the transmission system, who pays and who benefits. These are issues that, that have to be addressed um, because as private companies or shareholder-based companies, they need to be uh, accountable for where they spend their money and how they make their money. So these are problems that have now been um, brought up as, as compared to monopolies or vertically integrated systems where uh, decisions can be, uh, costs and benefit can be shared throughout the whole system. Cybersecurity is a key issue um, as we do look at uh, significant amounts of information being captured and transmitted. Uh, how secure is that to protect both the people as well as the operation of the system? And then lastly, on the customer side of things, um, when we hear about uh, pushback on uh, smart meter deployments um, and, say, other effects that we might not have anticipated, such as uh, people often at, at first cut look at time of use metering uh, or time of use billing uh, that's enabled by smart meters. That can be really good, but what about the low-income person who doesn't work? Um, and is at home all day. They can't take advantage of, of those situations. What do you do with that? And that requires um, work in the area of policy and regulation to address those issues. Another thing that um, uh, we see as a, a key need is looking across the electricity system. Um, as um, there are so many stakeholders, and, and in our discussion over lunch, uh, Katrina talked about uh, some of the uh, advocacy efforts in the, in the United States where there's deliberate attempts to stop um, uh, deployments of smart grids or smart meters by certain groups that are not expected. And often the, the cause of that is that they weren't engaged in the first place. And so I think we need to look very broad um, and holistically as we, we move to update this system because it's going to have multiple benefits, but it is going to have impacts on, uh, on people. And then lastly, on international collaboration. Um, yes, there's a lot of work happening in Ireland. That's very positive. But there's a lot of work happening all around the world. And what, what we don't want to see, and, and I don't think anyone does, is that um, work is uh, replicated without value. Um, we would love to see more sharing of knowledge. And, and I think the, the electricity industry is set up well to do that with utilities uh, that are regionally based, not necessarily competing with each other, have that opportunity to share uh, openly, to learn and give, um, and can accelerate the deployment of this uh, technology. Um, I touched on it a little bit, but the developing countries uh, and emerging economies, we're starting to do more work in this area. But we see that smart grids can really play a, a key role there, allowing them to leapfrog, um, not following the pathway maybe in our own countries that we followed. Uh, so there could be some real good opportunities there uh, for them. Perfect. So I just want to touch on um, uh, a couple things that we're doing in the future, and, uh, and, and then I'll be wrapping up. One thing I'd like to just point out um, is the International Smart Grid Action Net Network. And uh, Ireland has just joined, uh, I guess, our uh, newest member, so uh, welcome. Uh, so this is a group that is housed under the IEA where we can actually do some of that international collaboration. And the key areas that we're starting at, um, global smart grid inventory, what is happening around the world? There is some work in, in Europe, of course, that have, have gathered some, some uh, or have developed an inventory, but we still don't have a, actually a clear picture of what's happening around the world. Smart grid case studies, again, an, uh, uh, an opportunity to say what's going on, what's going well, and I hope what's going poorly. I hope we can communicate that openly. Uh, benefit cost analyses. And, and this is, I think, a, a, a very interesting topic. We're starting to get a grip on the cost 
What I don't think we're communicating as well um, in the industry is benefit, uh, both financially and other aspects, like keeping the system operating. So we're working on that. And then synthesis of insights for decision makers. It's a long name. Hopefully it will be changed. But the key point that I brought up at the beginning, how can we communicate what we need to do and how it needs to be done well and simply? So looking ahead, uh, some of the work that we're doing, smart customers uh, definitely need to address them as one of the key stakeholders, the key beneficiaries of the electricity system in general. So how are they treated? Uh, we need to understand that well. We are directly doing work on the benefit cost analysis. And one of our um, newest pieces of work is looking at demand response from, uh, as a flexibility uh, mechanism and uh, doing that um, in a quantitative way rather than just a qualitative way. Um, one of our key uh, publications, uh, Energy Technology Perspectives 2012, uh, again, more discussion of this in the entire energy system. Um, and then lastly, um, energy systems in emerging economies and developing countries. Looking at that uh, both from an opportunistic point of view, how can we help, how can, what are the business opportunities, as well as um, in the end, we're all competing for the same amount of finite energy in this world. We need to understand them, we need to help ourselves, and we need to help them so that there's enough to go around. Um, looking at it, I guess, uh, from a self-interest point of view. Um, and then lastly, again, ISGAN is uh, continuing to work. And I would encourage you to monitor that uh, uh, to take a look at what's going on in the global uh, smart grid world. So lastly, uh, as uh, um, mentioned uh, by Dermot, uh, we believe smart grids are very important from an energy security, economic development point of view, and as well climate change. Um, and uh, I'm excited to see uh, where this goes uh, in the future. And uh, I think it's going to be very exciting and uh, very positive. So with that, I'll say thanks. Thank you very much.